Ted Salois, Director of Research at the McGregor Company. Today I'm at our winter wheat variety trial near Steptoe. That's the butte behind me. Maybe one of the prettiest uh, variety trial locations that we have. I love the view here. It is a really, um, it's a steep location. If I kind of pan up around me, you can see that uh, it is hillside. We're probably on a 30% grade. Um, it's really interesting to be able to see how the varieties do from the top of the hill to the bottom of the hill. Some varieties are, they get just stronger as we get a little rougher. This particular location, we actually went 165 bushels at the last time we were here. Even though we are on a hillside, it's a highly productive tow slope. I think the wheat here looks great. Um, it's in growth stage six, which means it's first and second node is about two inches apart. I think there's still quite a bit of yield potential at this location. We have decent moisture. We got some rain, not so much frost damage. I think things are really shaping up to be a quite high yielding year. I'm gonna walk you through how the varieties look after that frost event. I also have some agronomic trials here that are going after flag leaf plant health. Um, you're going to be hearing more and more about flag leaf plant health from me in the coming weeks. This location is a prime example. We've done everything right up until this point, I feel like. We have stabilized nitrogen in the fall. Our phosphorus program has really been addressed. Our seeding rate, our seed, our seed treat, so many things are going right at this location that if we um, don't put focus into how we're going to finish that season, a lot of those inputs could be wasted and we lose return on resources on those investments. So if we really, really wanna make sure that we're capitalizing on all of our resources, we need to make sure that we're managing that flag leaf to finish type timeframe. And the reason is, is that's when we're really determining our final fertile florets per spikelet and our weight per grain, hugely influential yield components. So let me walk you through the variety trial. There'll be more information about the flag leaf as time goes on. It was a great day in <laughs> researcher world. I love the view at the top of the mountain. It's just awesome. I'm gonna start in range two. This is pound 02, pound 20, LCS Jet. I thought this variety kind of consistently um, sustained quite a bit of damage uh, this location and on the farm. LCS Rocket, this again was another one that was um, a decent amount of damage. AP Red Eye. Scorpio. WB4303, this one generally looked quite good. Let me see if I can. McGregor's new Midas, tons of top growth, some winter damage on it. WSU's Pearl, look at how consistent that stand is. Looks really sharp here. WB40, or 1783, Nixon from OSU. WSU Stingray, and I have Resilience side by side. Resilience, I thought Resilience looked weaker the higher up the hillside we get and stingray looks really consistent from top to bottom so quite excited about how this guy looks a new coaxium variety osu two by two u of i magic AP Iliad, man, this is probably one of the bigger varieties at this location, not too much damage. It's grown out of it nicely because it's right next to McGregor's Impress. And Impress looks really strong at this location. SY Ovation. LCS Shine, really late variety. It's short, it's not even in stem elongation in yet. That's why it looks so short. Northwest Tandem is also what the field around us is planted to. It um, is growing out of its kind of winter uglies. 
It sustained very little frost damage. It looks really strong at this location. LCS Ghost, lots of frost damage, lots of top growth. SY Dayton I thought was one of the stronger for as big as it is. SY Raptor, NVI Bulldog.